Is Nisi still on? I am. Oh. Well, we're live. Can you hear too? Okay. All right. We're live? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, we're going to call the uh, March 12, 2020 meeting of the Finance Committee of the uh, Council of School Board of Directors to order. Uh, if there's no objection, can we move the discussion item in the Northampton Township Alert Program up to the top of the agenda so we can have our distinguished guests from oh, the That's the right thing to do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, very good. Uh, so, who's speaking? For uh, uh, Pal Palagrina, thank you. And before you start, Bob, I want to publicly thank you for your assistance with getting our letter for the grant that we just approved, uh, turned around so quickly. I think it was just sent to you a day or two ago. Same day we turned it over. That's great. Thank <laughs> you very much. We're, we're, we're all we're happy now. Great. Thank you. I would have brought a stick if I had known you were set up like this, but um, I have a handout. Um, I guess we can pass around this way. And let me get one to folks in the back. Hey, Bob, I'm sorry, I missed the set. Before we start, since this is the new meeting. Can we go around the table, please, and do introductions for those who would be listening? So, uh, Ed, can you start with Ed Salomon, school board. Mike Thorward, school board. Bill Stone, director of business administration. Matt Federson, IT director. Gary McKee, school board. Ed Tate, school board. Cheryl Rabanne, assistant business administrator. Robert Berger, superintendent. School board. And Mark Finley, school board. And uh, we have Mr. Bob Pellegrino from Northampton Township um, manager and um, Eileen Silver and Bill Ward is our assistant township manager. Okay. Anybody else? Are you committed community members? Or? Um, I'm for the, uh, the committee. Oh, I guess I'm going to the next presentation. Okay. Very good. So, um, and this is Denise. I'm on the phone. Goodness gracious, I'm missing everybody. Okay, well, Chris, you Kristen? Kristen's on the phone as well. Thank you. Kristen, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ready now. All right. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to come here and present. Um, I was here five or six years ago and presented to the then school board on a program called LERDA. Um, the second page describes what it is, but it's the Local Economic Revitalization Act Assistant Act. And of course, we have an acronym for that uh, called LERDA, like we have an acronym for everything. Uh, and the law has been in place for many, many years, and it allows taxing jurisdictions to exempt uh, new construction and or improvements to real property uh, of a non-residential nature from increased real estate taxes. Uh, and that is only in areas that are defined by the local municipality. Um, as alerted zones. Now, what's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is to provide a, a tax incentive to the private sector to encourage redevelopment, primarily in our case, uh, since we don't have much in the way of new land to develop, redevelopment of sometimes um, dilapidated properties or properties that are just tired and need, uh, need rehabilitation, need improvement, and also to help, um, in our case, again, generally smaller businesses um, to expand when they might not be able to afford to do so. Sometimes these property owners uh, want to do something with their business, and they, they, they are really tight with the funds, and they want to expand, but they're not sure they can afford to do so. And this is a this is a program that allows uh, them to get a break on their real estate taxes uh, for whatever period the program defines. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what I think what, um, what you have to keep in mind is that uh, it, is, it is a tax incentive program. The underlying tax on the property does not change. And by way of example, um, if a property is assessed at, I'll use just round numbers, $10,000, and 
that's a non-residential property, and they want to do improvements to the building. Maybe they want to add a, a, you know, some space to, the, to a manufacturing facility or an office space or a retail space. And they, the value of their improvements results in a, in a $5,000 increase in their real estate tax assessment. The abatement of the tax is only on that $5,000, it's not on the underlying uh, original assessment. And in our case, the law allows, uh, the law provides that um, the municipality, the district, the county uh, can all agree on the term of the program up to 10 years and can agree on the amount of the assessment or, uh, or abatement. Uh, for that, for that, whatever period is selected, and there are a number of learner programs around the county, generally in the smaller boroughs. Um, I don't know of larger townships uh, in the lower end that a lot of commercial areas have it, but in our case, we're talking about the villages of Holland and Richboro, not big areas. Uh, when you compare it to the size of Northampton Township, which is almost 27,000 or 27 square miles, um, when you look at the villages of Richboro and Holland um, and the area that we're proposing, which is the, um, the industrial park and um, the Springville Manor properties, when you look at the value of that assessment, I don't have it in here, but I can tell you what it is. It's, a, it's about 5% of our total tax base for all those properties put together. So you're not talking about a, a, a large portion of the assessed valuation of our community. Um, so in 2014, <coughs> the supervisors, as a way of promoting economic development, uh, discussed and approved alert program. Um, that program called for a 100% abatement on the value of the increased assessed valuation for five years. And that was our program. We tried to keep it simple. Other communities, I think Percocy is one of them, has a program that's 10 years, but the abatement is 100% the first year, 80% um, in or 90% in the second year. 80% you know, in the third year and so forth and so on. We decided in conjunction with the discussion with the County Planning Commission that it would be easier just to keep it simple, keep it to five years, and keep it at 100%. Now, we did that in 2014. We spent a lot of time with the school board at that, at that time, um, get, getting the school board to understand and agree on that, that board that this was probably a good idea. Um, with, and the, the real purpose of it is to encourage redevelopment and you don't lose any underlying tax, again, revenue, um, but you have the opportunity to promote development that down the line may, um, may see improvement in the assessed value that you might not otherwise see. So you give a little and you, and you get a little. Um, the alerted zones are on the are described on the second page They're on the map. It's a rather small map, but you can see there are fairly small areas in the township. It's a third page. And um, in 2014, when the board adopted the ordinance, uh, the law required the school district and the county, if you were going to participate, to adopt resolutions that would uh, approve the program as well. The real benefit, frankly, is, is you guys, the school district, because you're going to be tax the most of, uh, of uh, the assessment. Um, so without your program, without your support, um, it, it doesn't have as much meaning for the property owners. So we're asking you again, uh, we did this for the last five years, we asked asking you again to reaffirm it, uh, to re-adopt the resolution, um, supporting this. Now, the township hasn't done this yet. Uh, we wanted to come here and make sure that the school board 
uh, was, was okay with this before we went through the process. Uh, but the township will, if you agree, participate. We'll have to adopt another ordinance because our ordinance sunsetted in November. And uh, you know, we have to reauthorize it. Uh, we would propose the same thing that we would have a five year period and the ordinance would sunset again in five years. And we'll revisit the whole, uh, whole program at that time. If you go to the last page, uh, and Bill had asked um, us to put this together, uh, it, this, is the, uh, this is the list of properties. There were seven properties that have participated in the program since 2014. Um, if you look at the, at the certificate of occupancy dates, those are the dates um, that the assessment begins. Uh, applicants apply within 60 days of getting their building permit, and once they receive their certificate of occupancy, that's the start date for the abatement, and then five years from that date uh, is when they start to pay the full value of the increased assessment uh, from the improvements. So you can see, I think there's, um, I think there's one, two, three, five properties that, um, will start to pay taxes uh, this year. Um, campus close as of February 6th, and the others, you can see the dates there. This also shows, uh, based on your current millage, the abatement value is in the far right column. Uh, you can see that the largest project campus close is $1.4 million. Um, using the uh, Using the valuation and applying the common level ratio uh, from the Bucks County Board of Assessment, which right now is 11 percent, um, and that ratio is something that's calculated by the county, uh, which essentially says the assessed value of a property is 11 percent of what they believe the market value is. So these are based on the construction costs. Um, Bill and I confirmed that. There were no, there was no data available yet on the actual assessment for the county. But these are, it's probably the outside values uh, based on the construction costs that we have in, in our office. So I just wanted to qualify that. And the numbers to the right are the, are the value of the abatements. So you can see in the five year period, it was uh, 40, 41,000 a year, um, $200,000 over so the five years. So that is pretty much a sum of the program at a high level. Um, I can try and answer any questions if you have detail questions or uh, any questions from the board. I do. Please. Um, I think the, the logic is really clear. Um, I'm interested though particularly in the Spring Mill Manor property. Um, what in the offing there? Well, it goes back to 2014. We had been in conversation with them about possibly building a, a small hotel on that property. And in order to incent the DePaul family to do that, uh, we included them in the, in the Lurida zone. Yeah. They did a study um, back then, and it, it, uh, uh, the study came back and said a hotel might be borderline successful, profitable. So Mr. DePaul at the time said he didn't want to make the investment. Um, we don't know if that's, that's changed, so we're proposing to leave it in and see if we can re restart that whole discussion with them. And what's the status of the golf course? The golf course is detected in that township. And it's going to continue as a golf course? course for the foreseeable future? Yes, we are, we are, we own and we operate the golf course uh, just like it was operated prior to the purchase. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Good. Okay. Are you talking about Spring Mill? No, no. Are you talking about Spring Mill or our golf course? I'm talking about Spring Mill. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't think you were looking that out. Okay. I'm talking about Northampton Valley. Yeah, no, no, no. I've, I've, By the way, nice it's a course. wonderful venue. You would need weddings or, or <laughs> parties. Uh, great golf course. The food is amazing. It, and in the rain, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Springfield Golf Course um, 
my colleagues, Springfield no. Golf Course uh, will remain open. It is a private course. Um, the Paul family continues to own it. Uh, what you see on the front 32 acres is a, um, is a townhome development that is under construction. Uh, 175 units there. Um, the golf course uh, itself has a conservation easement on it. Oh. It can never be developed for housing or anything else. Got so it's either going to be operators of the golf course, a private course, uh, or it's going to be open space, or it's going to go fallow. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Thorpe. Um, I've got a couple. Uh, let's start with the recent news articles about a super wall off the end of Hall. Right now, that's Greenfield. Is that part of Lerda? That is part of Lerda, I believe. So yes. we're we're collecting uh, Greenfield taxes, not commercial uh, taxes on that right now. You're collecting what? We're, it's it's an empty field, so the tax rate on that's effectively zero. Right. Well, there's a house. Sure, but I think I think I can't tell from this map, but I believe that is in the Lerda zone. Okay, it is. Okay. It is. I can blow that. So, I mean, that, that's 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 proposed. Um, I saw. In the there's also um, there's there's two opportunities for development on that parcel. Um, one is the Super Wawa. Uh, that property has been zoned C2 commercial mm -hmm. for, I don't know, 30 years, however, whatever. Our master plan called for a realignment of Holland Road. I don't know if you've seen that plan. Mm -hmm. um, and some improvement in the lower portion of that property, um, ultimately perhaps closing Holland Road, going into Holland, uh, and having all traffic take the uh, new alignment uh, to Buck Road. And the traffic engineers have figured out how we can best make those improvements. And by, by, by closing Holland Road and creating a cul-de-sac at the end and vacating a portion of the lower portion of Holland Road down to the intersection with Buck, um, if we vacate that, and combine that with the, with the gasoline station, the service station that's there, you can create an area for development um, that might, uh, might not otherwise exist. So that, from our master plan standpoint, we're looking to develop that into more commercial space. Uh, on the lower portion of the Wawa property, I'll call the Wawa property, the right property, um, there are other possible developments that might occur there, maybe in the red on a residential nature. Okay. Um, it said in your presentation this is for non residential properties. Correct. What is an apartment complex counted? That's residential. Okay. Um, and my last one for right now, the Davis Pontiac site, which you've heavily developed. Um, actually two questions. Uh, is that in in the Lerda? It is not. It is not. It's carved out of the road zone. Okay. And then lastly, these seven properties that have received a five-year tax break, if we approve this, will they continue to receive a tax break? No, they'll be done okay. after the... Because I've been asked by community members. So. On those dates that are yeah. listed okay. there, they'll be done. Okay. They only okay. get one shot. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, okay. it's important. So, okay. Good. Yep, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I'll start. So the 2018 uh, Richboro Village Master Plan shows a lot of potential uh, revitalization and development. Is there any plan or timetable for the next five years that that could impact, that could be impacted by the LERDA? We're hoping, I'm hoping, the board is hoping to develop some of the more rundown properties along 2nd Street Pike. We don't have have any areas there that where we can build a shopping center, for example? They're, they just the land just isn't there. You might get parcels, you might get smaller um, development on on smaller parcels, but we're not seeing anything that I can tell you about that potentially going to happen. We 
have the shopping center where um, uh, the old Richboro Market is. Um, we do have an interest from Giant in going in there. Um, but you know, they need some zoning variances, and I, I can't tell you whether that's going to be successful. Of course, I'll come back to Spring Mill. Uh, the whole golf course seems to be highlighted. The learners don't even know the majority of that is, uh, is conservation, or is it not highlighted? Yeah, that, that, as I said, the township has to redo everything. So, in this case, uh, I would recommend that the supervisor <coughs> the golf course because it doesn't need to be there anymore. It can't be developed. So, we have to redo. Two things the township does. We have to redo because everything sunsetted the establishment of the third zones and the ordinance that creates the program. For the school districts and the county's purposes, your uh, involvement would simply be to adopt resolutions approving the program. Would anybody ask about Holland Village? What's any point in there? Holland, sorry, the Holland Village? Is that what it is? That's it. That's In the shopping center? I guess there's not much area there to be developed either. Not really in Holland. No race in. Holland Village, I mean, those shopping centers, if, if they're going to do improvements, it's going to be facelifts. Mm -hmm. They're not going to follow. They have to be, uh, it's, not, it's not aesthetic improvements that qualify. It's if you do something that changes the assessed valuation. The county assessor's office has to come down and reassess because the building permit triggered that action, then they would be eligible for the program. But if they're doing interior renovations, they're replacing their air conditioning systems, uh, painting, that's not going to qualify. So it's not going to trigger, um, it's not going to trigger the type of building permit uh, that the county assessor would, would uh, cause the county assessor. Sense. The last question would be, if they could say multiple properties and they would ask for a variance, I guess, to combine them, knock them down, and could do major uh, construction on multiple smaller that could have run down properties. Sure, that could happen. These are all of them. That could happen. Okay. I don't know where that would happen. There's only one area I can think of, and that would be on 2nd Street Pike, uh, right below the wall. There's some properties there. Some of them have already been fixed up. Um, there's maybe two properties I think that could be combined down there. Is the middle school property um, included? It's from us? Yeah. That's a really good question. It is in this map, I think. Yeah, I think it is. But we don't pay taxes anyway. Right. <laughs> Why do we? We can't develop it either. We sold it. Not that we're selling it. We got plans. 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 But frankly, if you were selling it, um, that's certainly an incentive to a buyer. Yeah, we're not selling it. Hypothetically, if you were selling uh, any other sum. So I just need some clarification because I'm trying to fully get my hands around this. So to jump on Dr. Thorward's question regarding the lower end in the Holland area, and you mentioned Mill Race Inn, which quite frankly I think is a disgrace to the township that it's in the condition it's in. We're not addressing that. What what exactly? We are, we are addressing that. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm outside of the proposed Wawa, what, what, who else would really take advantage of this in that, in that quadrant down there? And that, that's well, again, I wish I had thought master plan with me, but if you're coming down Holland and Buck, you know where the gas station is. Mm -hmm. Take the gas station, take the right of way of Holland Road, add it to the shopping center next door, you've created a couple of acres there of developable land. Now you now you've got an area where you can maybe create a center. Maybe the old Wawa gets demolished. I don't know, but uh, Mr. Starin owns that property. 
Uh, he owns most of Holland, uh, as you don't know him. Uh, and uh, we're, we're trying to promote um, commercial development in the small villages that we have. Again, less than 5% of our total assessed value. Our total assessed value is about 500 and it's around 590 million. So I, I so I think my, my okay. So my question basically is 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 any of this, in your view, outside of trying to stimulate building, is 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 it really worth going through all of this, for for a possible Wawa or a possible change of scenery, in one area where possible hotel? I mean, I, I'd like to hear that there's something in the works that's going to take advantage of of it than than you know, possible. Well, we don't know what could be developed. Um, I mean, you got a sense or else we wouldn't be here, I would assume, right? No, I don't. I don't know what... I know Wawa is proposing. We don't know what's coming in. I, mean, I mentioned the giant in Richboro. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the plans are for any of the properties in Holland. I know what's going on with the mill race. The mill race, um, shortly, Hopefully, we will have a proposal to redevelop that and the supervisors approve it. You'll see that building improved. Um, we've got a couple of options there, but it's up to the board um, to decide which one they want. Uh, that property is owned by the Fox County Redevelopment Authority through a contract with the township. Um, the RDA is our agent, and they are seeking proposals now. We, we, we wasted, frankly, a couple of years with a proposed developer to put a restaurant in there, um, and um, it turned out that the project was way more expensive than they thought it was going to be, and they pulled out. So we thought we had it, and we didn't. So you never know with commercial development. It depends on the market conditions. It depends on interest rates. Uh, you just don't know. Um, now, we didn't, by the way, ask for a Wawa in Holland. Um, the property zone commercial. The Wright brothers, the Wright family wanted to sell it. Um, you know, they're represented by counsel. Um, he happens to do a lot of work with Wawa, and lo and behold, we have an application. Um, so the one good thing about that is uh, that Wawa, for better or for worse, um, will implement um, a significant portion of our master plan, uh, particularly with, with the realignment of Holland Road, which is, is going to be a, a, a million dollar, at least a million dollar project. Over and above. And much needed. I'm going to all agree. Yeah, over and above what they're, over and above what they're already spending to, to do their store. So, yeah. one more. I think Mary has a question. Right. Yes, please. So apart from the golf course at Spring Mill, do you foresee changing the Lerda areas significantly? No, I do not. So these are the areas that we're talking about. Yes. The, 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 um, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but we have overlay zoning districts mm -hmm. that also are designed to promote development in our commercial areas. And these the Lerda, the Lerda boundaries uh, conform to the overlay zoning district boundaries, mm -hmm. which I can keep Okay, and I don't know that this is a question you can answer. Um, it's, it's, I guess, kind of more of a philosophical question in terms of how much of an incentive this actually uh, actually generates. For example, when we're talking about Wawa, would they be building regardless of this opportunity Probably. or not? Right. That's, um, so that's my concern is how much are we incentivizing people and giving them a tax break when they would go ahead and they would do the, the development or the reconstruction anyway? Yeah, maybe we look at carving that out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what we did with the Davis Pontiac site last time. We had a feeling it was going to be developed anyway. So well, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and they, oh, you know, that project cost, because of the long two years of conditional use hearings, uh, we spent a lot of money with attorneys. You know, we didn't feel it was right to have them get a tax break for that reason. Yeah. They dragged us through the mud for a long time. Yeah. That kind of asked me, I'm sorry. I was going to add something to Go what ahead. I said. Um, one of the things that we did a while ago is we changed some of the zoning for our business and technology center. 
and we now allow certain retail to go in there. That is something that we hope that the world could intend to make someone want to go and do. Um, we would like, you know, maybe a cleaner or maybe a lunch place or an Amazon so the people who work there don't have to go to the woman's store or anywhere else. They just go right there at lunchtime and do their thing. You know, so if the lure comes back, then we are able to put that out there to real estate agents and say, if you are finding people who want to do this, they will get a tax break. So um, for the company that you see on there, mm -hmm. it is incentivized that it's come. They want it. Can you cost? Can you close? I mean, they make a big change to their warehouse and then tax. That, that was the biggest one. Well, Campus Close was, they were, they really benefited from this because they were, no. again, I mentioned early on, on the border of you know, whether they could afford to do what they wanted to do, and this kind of thing the most the top. I don't know about some of these others. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you 59 All South when it first opened was struggling a lot. Mm -hmm. I think this, this helped them get through that, and I think now they're a pretty successful business and seem to be busy all the time. And we're looking at Dumac, who owns this uh, school. He would like to um, expand, you know, and make a, a community room and, and have other businesses within. So that's something else that this word will help him maybe decide what I think I want to do. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. The old schoolhouse, uh, he is, uh, that owner is uh, proposing additions to that building um, that will. Uh, Will be good community assets. The Campbell Thomas Funeral Home. I mean, these are all relatively small businesses, and I think that's frankly all we have. We don't have much else. Um, you know, we don't have the nice 20% uh, non-residential, um, you know, tax base that Newtown has. Um, but that's as a result of their, their joint zoning that put all the commercial in Newtown Township and all the, uh, all the quarries and rights down and all the open space and upper make them. And that's the advantage of that joint that. You, you kind of met, I answered my question talking about some of the smaller businesses that are trying to you know, improve the community and I understand the benefit of it. I'm thinking the, the LERDA is approved by a, a state agency or something. You would have to apply? No. 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 You guys just adopt the resolution. The law, the law just the law spells out what we can do, and and we just have to okay. prepare ordinance within those guidelines. So revitalizing economically challenging areas is what was presented uh, in this document or the slide that we stated. So spring mills would be considered economically um, challenged area? No, not necessarily, but I think it's underdeveloped, um, and I think Holland is economically challenged. Mm -hmm. I think certain parts of Richburg are economically challenged. It's getting better than I think the data still. It's getting better, absolutely. The, the town's looking great, I think. And we, we, we have, um, you know, the township for its part has certain road improvements we're doing. Um, we have a lot of projects on the books now that we've gotten um, very good at the grants for. Um, and we're going to see some improvements. And for example, for those of you who have been around for a while, you know that Northampton Township has not had a very good reputation when it came to businesses in the past. Well, murder was something that when we put out there, said, oh, look at this. Northampton Township is open now. This is, you know, they want us to come now, but they're not going to give us a hard time. You know, and we have changed. The uh, is talking about it, so learn it is something that we look at as, as being business friendly, and and that helps improve your community when you have good businesses. And most of the businesses that use learn are very good community partners to us. And so that's another thing. You know, they got to learn it, so we go and they're just very good community Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all the other different community organizations you know that you go to these businesses. And they will help them out. So, I you know, and we, we do find that uh, this is something that's wild and um, that we talk about it and approve uh, 
that you will go along with us. And uh, Robert, do you think that doesn't everybody have to agree for us to have it, or can we do it ourselves? We can do it on our own, but we are such a small. I know. I, 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 I thought they had to have everybody had to agree. To no, it's such a, we're such a small in the county. But, but okay. Of course, okay. Okay. It doesn't probably make much sense. But, about this school district. Yeah, so I want to make sure that uh, Ms. Marcel and Ms. Brooks have an opportunity to ask any questions. So Kristen, do you have any questions? I don't, but there have been a lot of really great ones, but I don't have any at this time. Okay, thank you. Denise, do you have anything? Uh, no, I want to thank my board colleagues for asking many of the questions that I had. Thank you very much. Okay. I've got a couple. Uh, well, first of all, I generally with Second Street Pike, I don't think it's off topic, but it might be, but um, you were a township manager in Newtown during the Sycamore Street project, right? At least during the park. Well, the Sycamore Street project. So yeah. is there any discussion to do something like that with Second Street Pike? Because Sycamore was a mess, right? It was 45 miles an hour. It was always full of potholes. Yep. When I first looked at that plan, when I was in the planning commission for Newtown Township, I thought, no way you're going to have home street parking in Sycamore Street. And every time I drive down Second Street Pike, I think, why can't we have something like that here? We, we are... We talked about it on street parking. Um, with the roundabout, I'm not so sure we can get as much in there as we wanted. But um, I can tell you that as we build that project, um, the traffic patterns will change. Uh, the traffic engineers are telling me they want to have a center left turn uh, up to the roundabout, and then probably down. Where's the roundabout going in? Fossilton and Second Street. Okay. And Township Road uh, would be uh, intersecting there too. We're actually realigning Township Road uh, as well. Now, I don't know when this is going to happen. Uh, it's all grant dependent, you know, it's, it's development dependent. But um, uh, it, you know, it's on our master plan. Uh, Sycamore Street is a success, I would say. Completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, in relation to Lerda and these expansions, if you know. How many additional employees were brought on because of these improvements? I know campus closed hiring people. I, I couldn't tell you how many. Um, the other, I think the funeral home did. Um, <laughs> 59 off sales probably hired more people. Um, certainly the schoolhouse, there was nobody in there. I don't know how many are working in there now. It's probably 10 or 12. It's 10 or 12 and just two weeks. Um, people in there, you know, so we have from the state rest office, there's four people working there now, and upstairs for the software company, there's eight people. Right. And he wants to, he, he, Dumac, who owns that building, uh, wants to put size, a sizable addition on that uh, out back and on the sides. And I know that's going to generate some additional jobs. Um, I don't, I can't tell you about First National Bank or something. Sonic Systems is in the uh, industrial or business conference, um, and I think they probably, I, I won't speculate, but I'm guessing they probably did pick up some jobs there too. But that earned income tax is valuable, right? Absolutely. So those additional, no question. Even if it's, even if we're, we're abating some tax for a period of time, there's, we don't abate the earned income tax, right? You do not abate the earned income tax. Is the county on board, as yeah. far as you know? Okay. The County Planning Commission, I can tell you, having served 10 years on the County Planning Commission, um, wholeheartedly supports LERDA programs. And they have throughout the county, they don't even question um, the, the request for a resolution. Um, I know when we did ours, um, the county just approved it. I didn't even have to go to the meeting. The Executive Director of the Planning Commission took it to the commissioners and they just um, as I said, there are uh, half a dozen communities in the county that have other programs. Generally in the boroughs, uh, because they're denser, they're generally older, they're a little bit more in need of uh, attention. So what's the process? When is this in front of us at the board? This is well, kind of an information session. Yes, so I don't have it scheduled uh, for next week's board meeting. Uh, the earliest would be consideration at our April 20th. I think, I think we have to act first. Oh, yes. And yes. then 
once the board uh, again reapproves re uh, re the zones, <coughs> that has to be done by resolution. Then we'll have to advertise with up to advertise the ordinance. That's one month, uh, one board meeting, and then adopt the second. So probably looking at uh, June sometime. Okay, so yeah, you're going to come back to us with a map, yeah, right, and a and a resolution from the township. But then you said if we don't approve it, it doesn't make sense. So what do you do? Just back off at this point? Well, I, at that point, I mean, it's ideally, you you can, no. we create <laughs> the board creates the learner zones uh, as we discussed. Mm -hmm. we take out the golf course. I think everything else stays the same, and um, they approve that by resolution. It would be nice if I could have some idea if the board is going to go along with this. Because if the school district doesn't go along with it, I'm going to tell the supervisors we're not going to bother. It just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So okay. if there's, if it, I, don't know, I know you can't, you can't vote, but if you get a sense of whether there's support, that's all I need to hear. And if there is. And we'll go through our process. I will let Bill know uh, that when we have adopted the ordinance, and then whenever you can schedule it, you, you schedule it. Well, Mr. Shelby, so if you find that there are certain parts of the, uh, the zone that some of your uh, board members are questioning, then you know maybe yeah. the, the contact between you and Mr. Sarabrino before you get that we can discuss it. And then he knows where we stand, and we know where you stand. And just like last time, we can make it, can, you know, each of us can make a compromise, and we can get this done. Okay. So if that where we have to come back, and where if you're, you know, everything, you will know, and you will hear what your people have to say. That the cops are going to have to go through. And the things that are going on in this country at the moment, um, who knows what's going to be with. Having uh, township meetings, school district meetings, and so forth. I, I was just going to mention, um, so, we yeah. just hope we just talk about this today. We're probably going to cancel our March board meeting. Governor has you know, put out a proclamation to municipalities and some of the school districts the ability to take emergency steps in light of the virus. Um, and we're, we're going to really be probably. Uh, closing our senior center, closing our library, um, cutting back all of our recreation program, shutting that down for some time, uh, and most likely canceling our board meeting, at least in March. We'll see. Um, I mean, if I have to, if we need to take action because we have, you know, things that we absolutely have to have action on, then we'll we'll set up a meeting, but I, it's going to be very short. And, uh, and since it's unprecedented, I don't think we're going to have a problem with the function. We're trying, no, we're trying to minimize, we're trying to minimize contact. I uh, have a lot of people at the board meetings and, and so forth. It's on the old farm board. Dr. Bridges, do you have a comment? I do. Just just for the board's edification, from where I sit, I, I support this um, and, and agree with the notion that if there are, you know, some some changes that, that board members want to speak to this, and by all means, that feedback goes to Mr. Stone, back to Mr. Pellegrino, back to the township uh, supervisors. Uh, I, I just view this uh, as part of a long game. Um, so there could be some pluses in the short term, there could be some minuses in the short term, um, but in the long term, to me, it's only positive. And um, when we look at finances, we've gotten into the habit, uh, thanks to Mr. Pollock, of uh, projecting out five years and, uh, you know, certainly with a lot of our considerations, projecting out further than five years. And, and when I think about this, um, I only see positives uh, beyond five years and potential positives within those first five years. So happy to have that conversation offline uh, if any board member wants to, but I uh, just want to share that while we have the folks in the township here. Thank you, Bob. I, I, I echo your sentiment that this is a long-term play. That's exactly what it is. I should have said that earlier. Okay. So I think that if any board member has some significant concerns that would stop them from <coughs> reporting the measure when it comes in front of us, reach out to Dr. Frazier, reach out to Mr. Stone, and we'll see if we can ease your concerns, and, and we'll go from there. We'll give you some kind of feeling about 
uh, whether we think it's, it's a go or no go. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you. Good, good question. Thank you. All right, moving on. So we'll go back to the top of the event. Bill. Bill. You want a <laughs> gentleman? You want a smart one? Huh? Sorry. We have somebody from the financial advisory committee. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to pop in? Uh, uh, would you, you want to stay for our meeting, or you want to have your discussion now? That's what I would do. Yeah, he, he's, he's, up he's up now. He's up now. He's up now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He joined us. So. I'd like to introduce Dave Oberowski. He's uh, one of the volunteer leaders of the Financial Advisory Committee. Uh, his counterpart, uh, Al Matulis, had a, a family matter and, and could not attend tonight. Uh, but Dave is here just to say hello, introduce himself, talk about what the committee has done, what it's planning to do, and uh, the, the path ahead. So, good evening, everybody. All right. Um, when Al and I were talking as the leaders of the committee, we kind of wanted to bring to the rest of the committee members kind of the mission and objective of our committee. And I really saw this line in the 2018 audit report, really that second line about management of the district continues to aggressively implement cost efficiencies and revenue generating strategies to combat the factors. You're all aware of what, what it is. So we as the committee, I want to lead them to, to be very open-minded about looking and trying to, to find things to help. And really, I almost look at it from my perspective almost like a pseudo audit, just to look at it, understand it. Uh, we've got a great group of people, diverse group of people in there, just a group of 11, you know, business owners, lawyer, um, bank credit union, I'm the CEO, sales executive auditor, so it's a, it's a great mix of backgrounds to help us on this committee. And then what we've had, we've had three meetings to date, um, November, January, and February. Bill has been great to give us an education about school district finances. So it was, it was very good. He has provided us a ton of information. Uh, I know obviously with the virus, already in my sitting on the side here going, well, we'll start these committee meetings, we can do them offline. You know, Bill has provided enough information for us to do that via phone calls and everything. Uh, we had another meeting scheduled for March 30th, but understanding we're not going to be in the building already, you know, plotting out the, the next steps. But the committee will continue uh, moving forward. All right. So our plan is to break the group of 11 down into three subgroups. And what we did is we put out a poll to the group uh, in preparation for the meeting on March 30th to kind of look at potentially the salary benefits, pension, insurance side of things, investment, debt financing, and then the tax revenue side. So the, we asked everybody, you know, obviously based on their background, pick one, two, three, what you'd like to do. Uh, Al was working on pulling the voting together. So then that was the things we were going to do at the meeting on the 30th, say, here's where everybody wanted to be. These are the committees we put together. Let's all talk as a group how we're going to do it um, and kind of find a leader of all of those subgroups also. So those leaders of the subgroups will, will kind of let out and myself know, and then we can report up to the committee here. All right. So uh, Al and I are stressing to those subgroups they are going to need to meet, work, you know, it's not going to be just once a month. It's not going to be enough time to really get, get things done. Um, and then what we're planning to do is hold, if we can, a group meeting at least once a month. And then everybody kind of can tell, hey, here's where we're working on. I look at that as the way that's going to make sure everyone's doing their stuff during the month to bring it, because no one's going to want to come and, you know, say, well, we didn't get to meet this month and things like that. So it'll keep the group meeting. And then what we'd like to do is provide quarterly updates here. Um, so Al and myself would come present, answer any questions, fill you in on, on what, what we've done so far, what each of the committees are doing. Okay. Right. So overall, any other questions that you have for, for me? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward. No, no, it, it, yeah. it, it's daunting and school finances I know are different than corporate finances. Yeah. So it, it, but yeah, good. No, I have some of the rules. And, you know, I've, it, Craig and we're over highly regulated. When he, which first thing was the general ledger. Like, I have the same thing, set numbers and yeah. all that. So okay. that, that was quick for me to pick up, so, which is good. 
So I got to tell you, when Mark brought it up in conversation about putting this together, uh, you know, when Mark talks, he sit there and always turn your head a little sideways, <laughs> <laughs> like he does right there. Yeah. Um, I thought it was an interesting concept. Um, you know, how to get things, and how to do things, and how to make things efficient. Um, putting this together was was a concept that no one told us to try, right? Mm -hmm. And I, and I think it's interesting, and I think it's, I think it's it's going to pay dividends. If nothing else, it's going to educate the community another layer. Yes. And I think that's important in today's world where social media rumors and innuendo runs amok, and a lot of it are wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I applaud everybody for for doing it, um, because that work is is right in line with what we do once, mm -hmm. twice, and email starting at six o'clock in the morning. So it's it, it's a great layer to have another tool in the toolbox. So mm -hmm. thank you for doing it. Thank really you. appreciate it. I'll just say thanks for volunteering and coming out and doing this. You can tell that later to the whole group. I will. Kind of like some school board training in your degree mm -hmm. here. So I just appreciate you uh, taking the time to volunteer. The, the only thing I'd offer is, uh, you know, in addition to thanking you for doing this, is. I think I said this at the outset that uh, I don't expect any big wins. Um, I think mm -hmm. that would be unreasonable. If you do, that's terrific. That's a bonus. If if you all produce a, a set of small, you know, steps forward, that'll be terrific and worth the effort. And it'll also tell us that we're doing most everything right. Um, mm -hmm. So that's. My point, I don't expect yeah. any big wins, but whatever you can produce will be very valuable. I, I, I've come, and Alan and I discussed it, and I said, you know what, it will be a success if we come back and say everything is working really well. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing everything. They're managing the finances to the best of their abilities. This is the best we can do as a school district, and I think that's fine to come back and say that. Good. You know, Good. Um, you know that's my take on it. Yes, it's not going to stop us, and I want to stress to the group, very, they need to be very open-minded. Mm -hmm on this, you know, we need to really take a look at it. So, you know, Al and I really are pushing that there is participation in those meetings and in subgroups, that's really what I want to push because I just, you know, feeling, you know, just the summer comes up and also, you know, obviously it's summertime and, but, you know, we need to keep moving on this and, you know, kind of set things. We talked to Bill about potentially having group meetings here if we can use the space, um, you know, things like that. I want to roll up, does anybody else have, you know, office space? I, I'd be more than willing to use my boardroom where I'm at to hold meetings. I can do that. You know, I've already talked to my board, and they're they're all full of it. So it's just things like that, just so that we can all get together, have that screen up there. You know, and get the group dialogue going when this virus is all over. With. Yeah. Mark. Anybody else? Well, I just too want to say thank you. I'm so giddy with excitement. I can't. <laughs> I hope you can that will look. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> So I love the focus because as yeah. even working with uh, in the finance committee, we get distracted from other things. You know, we have uh, facilities that comes up, viruses that come up, student issues that come up. So just be able to have that laser focus mm -hmm. with people is really great. The subcommittee is a great idea, mm -hmm. and the multiple meetings every month I think is fabulous. Yeah. So I really appreciate the commitment. I'll say though, I it'd be great if you came back to us and said everything's great, but don't be afraid to start yeah. up. Yeah. Please don't, no. because we've we've already done that, and we're doing things that other districts don't do, like mm -hmm. having an outside investment consultant that's making us a lot more money every year and protecting mm -hmm. the board. So, please don't be afraid to start up. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that too. That too. Yeah. Yes. And I don't think anybody on this board would have any problem with you using whatever facilities we have yeah. available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, just yeah. not in the next couple of days. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> wait for it. Yeah. Yeah, we, we also don't want to, um, we're coordinating, like, we may meet the, the nights you have the meetings here, because we know you're here, we know Bill's here. We're, yeah. yeah. You know, we already killed Bill coming in at, you know, 7.30 on Monday, so he wasn't <laughs> Yeah, when he rolled that out, we all like, that's got to be a typo, right? He's like, no, that's only No, no, we, we were just testing him. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, are we ready Thank to move you. on? No, thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. We at the top now. Yeah, we are. Yes. Okay. I wanted to have our guests. Uh, no, I agree completely. Yep. yep. All right. 
So we do have a, a couple of uh, board agenda items that, uh, pending any uh, additional discussion that might be needed at the board meeting, uh, I would propose moving to the consent agenda next week on the 19th. The first is the approval of the uh, 2021 Junior Prom contract for CR North at the Hyatt Regency in Princeton. That's the same venue that's been used over the last few years. Um, and you can see that there is that minimum charge there. This is, again, paid. Uh, the cost is paid by the attendees uh, at the prom. It comes from the, uh, from the student activities account. Um, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll run through all three of these quickly, and I'll take questions on them uh, at the end. Uh, the second item is to approve a bid for the visual art display system, otherwise known as art panels. Uh, I believe that the board knows and has attended the district art show and has seen the condition of the, uh, the art panels that we are currently using. They're large, bulky, heavy, dangerous. Um, so we did put out a bid. Uh, as you can see, the cost is uh, relatively substantial. Um, we put out a bid. Uh, we did uh, receive a number of responses, but most of the responses were uh, to decline uh, a, an offer uh, to bid. Uh, we believe the reason for that is that the, the specifications of the district were to uh, avoid some of the issues that we'd seen with other art panel systems. So we were very specific about making sure that they were lightweight, easily transportable, uh, and, and safe in their assembly. So uh, it is our recommendation to award a bid, uh, award this bid to MD Enterprises at the cost of $49,400. Uh, the funding comes as a result of the, uh, just sort of the timing of when our budget was adopted last year and what we knew at that point about the um, uh, expected cost of the uh, K-5 uh, bridges program for math. Uh, we had, we didn't quite have final numbers in before the budget was adopted, so we came in, um, but a budget was a little bit higher and this is going to help us uh, offset costs that would have been in the 2021 budget, which we're going to discuss in, uh, in just a few minutes. So it's sort of shifting some costs around to, to help out uh, in the future. Quick question. Uh, I believe this was stated before. Could you remind me what's the lifetime on these panels they're expected to? I, I don't know. I'll find that out. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I believe they're, they're actually uh, on display in the lobby in the samples, and then they... Um, they, they appear to me to be pretty durable, but Thank I, you. I don't know specifically if they're warranted or anything like that. District Art Coordinator, respect these thoroughly. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. I'm sure. You know. Just curious to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what do you do with the old displays? They can be used in some other fashion? Or are they in any other fashion? The it are in rough shape. They are in rough shape. Yeah. 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 Joe, I think yeah, some of them are actually ceiling tiles that are just painted black. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're really, yeah. they're, 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 they're really terrible. And, and they don't get it dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Try to maneuver. Any other questions from the board? Our, our public has a question. Back to the first one. The reason I came tonight was for the junior prom budget. Uh, I'm the treasurer of class of 2020 and have been for a few years now. Um, and I personally had a lot of issues with that proposed item at the top. Um, we reached out to our administrator and we were told we aren't in a position to find a new venue or to investigate other options. Um, is there a reason that we might not be able to investigate other options? And I thought, I wrote that, I do want to go into why I didn't have this. So um, I, I don't know for certain. I can I can speak to Mr. Griesbaum. Uh, I would presume that it's just a matter of, uh, for an event the size of a prom, it's often difficult to book a, uh, a venue. You do need a pretty long runway. Um, but uh, I was, you know, uh, this is the first I'm hearing of some concerns. I'd be happy to chat with you offline after the meeting or. Uh, no, I go through them as well here. It, it is up for both. Next week, right? I think it's fine. Okay. Can you just say your name and where you're from? Yeah, my name is Luke Costello. I'm from Newtown. Um, so this proposed um, contract is a little bit better than what I face as a junior. I'm a senior now. Last year, we had a minimum uh, requirement of $66 at 400 people. Um, we only had 300 students attend. The school had 400 people. A little less than 400 in my grade. Um, not all of whom were actually and willing to go to a prom. Um, so we're looking at ballpark number 300, that's including some students from outside schools. 
Um, our advisor, Ms. Stephen Van Kraska, actually has a junior class advisor now, is facing the exact same contract that we had last year to talk to, I think her name is Carrie, um, the event manager over at Princeton, um, about maybe lowering that annual requirement. So we lowered it from 400 to 350 um, and increased the per dollar amount from 66 to 67. Uh, that will bring it to a total of 23,450. Um, we added a sales tax as we regard uh, last year we regard the sales tax the district did not um, give out the information for our tax exemptions that increased it by 6.25% in New Jersey um, and added a mandatory gratuity in the contract worth 31,250. If you divide that by the 300 students who attended worth $104 per person before we have any entertainment or any added things. Um, added the cost, the female might, might purchase the draft, the guy with the red top. We're getting prom bouquets that are upwards of $50, as well as a limo to the menu as it's 30 minutes away and ends between 10.30 and 11 o'clock at night. And all viewers have viewer driver's license and are able to drive after 11 p.m. Um, for this contract, I'm not sure if any students were consulted. Um, I know that. As a student body and as a student representative, specifically the class director, I was not consultant and I had lots of issues over the last year. Um, the last part of the contract that I was concerned about is there's a clause that we need to provide our security. Uh, typically, that comes in the range of a police officer. When you get one police officer, a second will come and we have a paper bed. Um, Council Rock up north, 300 students having a fun night. I'm not sure. I mean, you guys. In my opinion, it's not needed. They haven't done anything there in quite a few years. Um, and if there have been any issues with behaviors, um, administrators have dealt with it. And I don't think any students who face criminal issues related to under drinking or anything like that. So they really haven't served any purpose for us. Um, the last part is we had to pay for the fire market last year because Princeton High doesn't allow um, smoke or fog machines to set up the fire alarm. They had to turn off the fire alarm and have the fire department literally standing there for us to use CO2 damage, which are the standard at any event like this. Um, so at the meeting next week, um, I would encourage you guys to reconsider this contract, perhaps not go with the contract, um, and consult students in either finding a new contract with this venue or investigating other venues. I'm happy to, happy to do that with Mr. Griesbaum. Prior to the meeting. Well, I don't want to, from, from my standpoint, I don't want to set any unrealistic expectations. It feels really close to be making changes. This, this is oh, it's for next year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I take that back. So, uh, okay. Yeah, make sure so I, I think it's great that you're getting involved. Do you, do you do any fundraising or anything to offset any of the costs? So, yeah, we lose money on this event each year. Um, we charge $100 per three days. And one time in the second two days of ticket sales uh, for me at uh, uh, 105. Um, we had at least $10 in entertainment per person. We spent a 35 or 4000 extra with one entertainment package for the prom last year. So that $35,000, $4,000 package came out of our budget that we fundraised and worked hard for. Uh, and directly affects students who are looking to go to our Disney trip, all the money that we raise really ends up going to our Disney trip. Um, and when we spend four thousand dollars to pay for DJ at a venue that <coughs> might be far overpriced and doesn't fit our school population at three hundred students attending, that directly cuts out students who might get financial support for Disney. Um, the senior problem is looking at the forty five thousand dollar package before we're looking really at fifty thousand dollars. Do we have do we have a venue in the district that can hold 300 kids? Fuse. Uh, has the first thing that's on the bottom. Fuse. Have it. Are you know? Can't spring out. Hold 300. Uh, really think why? There's lots of places. How about the Northampton Country Club? There's tons of places. This, 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 I mean, this is more expensive than any wedding that I've ever heard of. Forty-five thousand dollars for the personal tea room and seven dollars. Plus five thousand dollars. You're going that I mean, from my perspective, I'm gonna get students to come 
Um, this is the 2021 contract. I'm going to have a conversation with Mr. Griesbaum um, and Luke, and we will. Uh, you may or may not see this item on the agenda next next week, depending on uh, that. I, I do believe we have some time uh, to have some further discussion, but that you know, I want to make sure that the kids have a venue for next year. Yeah. Can we get an update as well? Of course. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. So uh, number three on the list, the uh, Wright Town Bus Depot. Uh, we've had a number of conversations over the last few months, and I'm pleased to report that uh, four-year approval next week is a 10-year extension at the current terms for the Wright Town Bus Depot. Uh, but the uh, agreement includes an exit clause for uh, the district at any point <coughs> after three years with at least six months notice. So it's similar to the uh, Newtown Depot, although the exit is sooner and not a one-time exit. So we have the opportunity to uh, exit at any point after year three. And that was at the uh, landlord's uh, suggestion. <coughs> so that document looks exactly like Newtown, save for that slight de uh, deviation, and I would uh, recommend approving that. Uh, I'd like to put this behind you now. <laughs> Great job, Bill. Yeah, Thank this you. Was, you know, this was a lot of work in a short period of time. I think we've learned a lot from it. So Kristen and I have talked a lot with Bill about getting ahead of these contracts and having discovered for it. So this was a really good learning point for us. But great job on the follow-up. This, this is a huge win for the district, the flexibility. Any other questions? Okay. 
Next item for uh, consideration to move to the board agenda next week is a funding resolution for MBIT and the capital project that we've been discussing over the last several months. Um, I'll highlight for you the key provisions of this agreement. It is a uh, agreement between MBIT and all four member districts. So this is uh, approved by the executive council and then circulated amongst the, uh, the, the sending districts for approval. The total amount of the uh, projects are $8.5 million. You see the precise amount up on the screen there. That number is a not to exceed figure and I'll cover how that will work uh, practically as I get into the Council Rock funding discussion. So uh, it is over a five-year period. Uh, Council Rock has a fixed percentage over that period of 32.33% and we will make that funding annually on July 1st in accordance with that table below. We have, uh, at the business managers, uh, we met with MBIT and discussed having an annual reconciliation process uh, in order to determine the, uh, the, the progress of the, of the project. So because of the five-year term, each of these sets of projects are going to be individually bid. So we will have a, a group of projects bid in the first year, second year, et cetera, et cetera. The business managers, it was important to us that we had an accounting for how the projects were performing versus budget. So two things can happen either on over or under uh, our, our contribution. So using this $444,000 is kind of our baseline. MBIT will solicit bids for those projects. Those bids will come in at a, at a total dollar amount. The allocation will be calculated. If the funding comes in less than the total amount, so less than that 444, the agreement was that the districts would fund the, uh, fund the amount as stated in the agreement and roll any excess over into future years. Mm -hmm. With the um, key provision in the contract or in the agreement that states at the end of the contract if there's any additional funds left over that those be returned to the sending districts rather than uh, remain in MBIT's fund balance. So if the project ends with $500,000 that would be distributed pro rata back to the districts. If any particular project is over budget so if our contribution in total, uh, the, the total amount of the first year funding is about $2.7 million. If it came in uh, higher than $2.7 million, the districts agreed to, to fund, fully fund the project amount, but that future year funding would be adjusted so that the not to exceed amount would, would remain intact. And obviously, if another, um, if more funding is needed because of the construction environment or unforeseen conditions, then MBIT and, this, and the sending district would need to approve a new resolution or an amendment to the resolution to increase the not to exceed amount. So we have protection on, on both ends and that was important to the, to the business managers. So it's, it's our recommendation to approve this funding agreement. It's, um, I believe it's a, it's a, solid, um, a solid way to, to fund the project. We would do so out of our capital reserve funds, which is essentially funding with cash rather than through the borrowing, which will keep our costs down. We have the ability to plan over a, a five-year period and, and know that we have commitments each of these years and it's not, uh, won't be a surprise or a one-time um, one hit to our uh, capital reserve budget. So this is, a, this is a good compromise in order to help MBIT accomplish the work that it needs to get done. Any questions? All four of the district. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All four of the districts have a set amount for five years, just like this. Yes. But not that large. I know. Central box is high. Yeah, Central box is high. We are number two. Just checking in with Chris and Denise. Don't want to forget about you. They're familiar with MBIT. Oh, sorry, I was just talking on mute again. Um, I'm good, thank you. Okay. I have one question. It's the same question for everything that can be ice. What if we say no? So, um, as far as this resolution goes, that's an interesting question. Um, I, 
We say no. I believe that ultimately all the, the other districts would be responsible for our contributions um, to the to the project, which um, is uh, could result in some uh, awkwardness. Let's put it that way amongst our amongst our counterparts. Um, I've experienced some of that. Though. Right. Uh, awkwardness <laughs> with some of our counterparts. Yeah. Hey, this is Kristen. That might be something we have to talk about with Rob Cox and Robert. Yes, I mean, certainly I would be mechanically. Um, I, That's fine. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Very likely addressed in the agreement. Tonight. Kristen, do you want to identify the other person who's on the phone with you? <laughs> Just for this. All right, my son. Don't be my, sorry. My son. Very interested in the meeting. This is the best part of the meeting. This is the best part of the How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Thank Any you. other questions? Uh, I think we should wait until public comment. Yeah. Jump. Okay. Are we on there? Okay. Thank you very much. I have uh, two updates remaining uh, to go over. These are not. Uh, there's no action requested for either of these. Uh, but the first is uh, regarding our food service department. We do have uh, several. Um, things of, of uh, importance that, that will come before the board uh, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, the first is the renewal uh, with our uh, uh, food service management company, Chartwell. We were out to RFP in uh, May, last May of 2019, so very recently we were out and, and tested the market. Um, we have the option to renew the contract with Chartwell. Uh, in fact, it's technically a one-year contract. We have five renewals within that agreement, um, and that's, again, that's legislated by PDE uh, and their management of this. So I am seeking some stakeholder, stakeholder feedback from our building principal and the Food Service Advisory Council about uh, Chartwells. It's been my experience in several months of managing the program that uh, the, uh, we have uh, a positive outlook as far as the uh, program goes. Um, I don't have any reason to believe that, that Chartwells is not worthy of a renewal. Um, and certainly, given that we were very recently out and tested the market, that um, we're not, uh, I don't believe that we're in any um, jeopardy of um, uh, not being current in terms of market value on, on the agreement. But nevertheless, uh, we, we do have until uh, June 30th to make that action, and I want to take a couple of steps just to make sure that uh, that, that uh, is in place before bringing forward a recommendation to the board. Any uh, questions on that? Or oh, just a comment. Uh, so last year I did bring this up when we when we set an FRP about the quality uh, of Chartwells and the fact that I have two children in elementary school that refuse to eat their food. Um, I, I want to be on record again this year saying a year later my kids are very happy with what they're seeing. Uh, I've spoken to several of the Chartwell employees. They are going well beyond the scope that I saw prior to last year to make the kids, ingratiate the kids to try something different. Taco Tuesday, cheesesteaks, fun things that kids want to actually eat. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad. I don't know if it was what they, what they heard or what they saw, what their point of sales were, but to see them make the difference and, and think about it and, and solicit and go out there or whatever they did to make things different in a year's time, it's, it's, it's refreshing, let's say. So, I, yeah, let's give them another contract. The question on our from our conversation earlier in the week though. The hundred that was allocated from Charwell for equipment upgrades, implementation costs. Did you find that I we hear this this uh, recurring number? So is this an additional one hundred thousand or is this a deferred one hundred thousand dollars that was talked about the last time, talked about the time before that? I just I don't know. Yeah. So uh, we uh I did not cover that quite yet, but let me give you the background and I'll answer your question. Okay. So uh, we are um, investigating doing an upgrade to the point of sale system, which is the, the sort of the pin pad at the cash register and then the computer that runs that, which translates into all the reporting that we have to do for subsidy claiming and, and reporting. Uh, that system is tired. It's not particularly old. It's probably, we, we decided that it's at least probably five years old. Okay. At the last renewal, um, it was replaced. But it, the, the system that was selected at that point really just was not cut out for the, the volume that um, it needs to handle. Um, Matt can quote the, 
the technical specifications, but it's we're not we're not really running. I think they bought the computers on eBay. <laughs> oh. I don't think he's kidding. So uh, <laughs> it, it, what I learned, Mark, is that the that this they made a similar commitment at that time to replace the the equipment, um, and, and so they're sort of renewing okay. renewing that commitment. So they something. did they did replace the commitment it's just time so the, the equipment it's time to do it again. Time to do it. Again. So it's not deferred. No, oh no, 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 no not deferred. Um, so as part of this investigation, just in the event that we want to expand the district's use of online payments for other things, field trips, um, uh, you know, any kind of payment that, that students make, prom, prom tickets, for example. Um, we are looking at a system that we might be able to add on online payments for, for other, uh, other uh, areas of the, of the district. So, um, but we, the first thing that has to happen is the point of sale system so that we're ready to go in the fall. Um, but just, it's on the horizon that we might uh, add that. To right. Work. That makes sense because everybody's been mowing and pay balance all, you know, nobody uses cash anymore. Uh, <laughs> Question. Yes, sir. About a hundred thousand commitment to car call for is it fourteen units <coughs> for fourteen schools? No, there's uh, I don't know the precise number, but there's yeah, there's multiple lines and multiple computers. Even at the elementary school, some of them have two or three, uh, yeah, two or three registers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question, and you may not know it, but maybe Matt does. What they're looking at adding is this something that we're going that would work district wide? Something that we could add to Rock Block when that comes on if that comes online? Will this marry all into it? That's the the plan is to make sure that anything that we have that we can project into the near future that we are able to address it in the in the way we need. And so this is coming to you even before we're we've had I've had maybe two demos on systems and, and don't know precisely we haven't done a technical review on the system. We so don't we're, know. We're taking a more holistic approach this time. Last time the system was shoehorned in because we needed some kind of moderate right. payment system because they wanted to be able to use credit cards and track those kind of and give parents the ability to make payments on accounts sure. all that stuff. So we were shoehorned in. This we're taking a, a across the district look is this can this be used more than just the cafeterias? Can it be like like Bill was just saying, so we want to take, and we want to make sure that it's technically feasible. We had to go back and retrofit a lot of the buildings with wires because the computers wouldn't support wireless. So it was very good. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea. When Rock Block comes online, we talk about expanded kiosks and different points of sale. You know, this is a good time to make sure whatever we're buying at hundred thousand dollars can can go long term into something else. Well, this is chart was hundred thousand dollars, right? Yes. The um, doesn't sound like enough to me for everything that you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So how are we handling that, or how are they handling that? Are so, they over promising and they're going to be under delivering? I guess that's my question. Yeah. So uh, we will uh, proceed that the uh, food service fund would would pick up the any additional over and above the hundred thousand dollar commitment. So it could be a hundred thousand dollars from Chartwell, nine hundred thousand. Matt's nodding his head, yes. Wouldn't be the but yeah. <laughs> Technology always is cheaper. Yeah, it does. So, is there an invoice to get that $1,000 number, or is there some kind of estimates that you guys put together and share with us? And the implementation costs that you guys have to break? Once, yeah, up? once we've uh, made a determination on the system, we can absolutely do that, but we, I'm not even You're a, not there yet. Yeah, I'm not at that charge yet. Yeah, yeah, just so. FYI. So that extra cost, sorry, no, uh, that extra cost, it has to be included in the contract cost, right? So it's great that Chartwell is willing to kick in $100,000 of our $900 or $500,000 cost, whatever that's going to be. Let's assume it's going to be a million dollars because everything seems to cost us a million dollars. So shouldn't that be part of the contract cost when we, when we calculate it? Because if we're committing to it, if Charcoal's committing $100,000, we're going to make them c commit to the 100000 which means we're committing to the balance. So when we see the final contract, can't we just have that as an, an, an addendum item? That I think it's, yeah, I think it's timely that we're doing the contract renewal with this, mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that everybody's responsibilities are clearly defined. Yeah. I think that's what 
Joe was asking. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What, the, the other option we're trying to leave on the table is if we do buy a robust system that we can use outside of the food services, we want to make sure that we own the system. Yeah. But if we yeah. decide that Chartwell moves on, we're going to continue to keep the same system. Yeah. We don't have to replace it with something else and go through this exercise again. Yeah. I just want to cover the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that all makes sense. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. Yes, quickly, the last item there. We are uh, every three years. The district is required by PD regulations to review its wellness policy. So we are in our year three. Uh, so we will be, uh, the Food Service Advisory Council will review the wellness policy. We'll seek feedback from the health and PE teachers um, and uh, any other folks uh, and have any updates that may be necessary to our wellness policy <coughs> for you uh, and before June 30th. Ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm presenting tonight the first draft of the 2021 budget, uh, and also I'm going to go over uh, the state federal budget proposals in the season when they release their their information. So uh, I have a number of slides to go through just to kind of give you a sense of where we are starting uh, the budget process uh, this year. So just at a kind of a high level, right? If we think about the, the budget in total. Um, I think three three things it come to mind here. So number one, we're making some significant investments in, in student wellness, and Dr. Frazier has, has certainly um, spoken about this at, at length with our strategic plan. But the budget does include three an additional three elementary school counselors, two of which are going to be funded by a state grant. So we are very fortunate that the cost of those are already secured and, and in place uh, to fund two of those three counselors, and if I'm correct, that means we will be at one counselor for each elementary school building. With these three. With these three. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's significant. Uh, the second item, um, as you'll see in a, in a slide or two, the, the cost of our um, contractual obligations for, for salary and benefits is equal to what we're estimating in terms of local revenue. So what we what we have to pay our staff members, the largest percentage of our budget, is equal to what we can raise locally. And that, again, that's the most controllable factor in our revenue budget is what we can what we can bring in locally through the through the real estate tax rate. So that's going to be an important important uh, thing to keep in the back of your mind that what we're committed to on the expense side really takes up uh, what we what we are able to raise in terms of revenue. So that leads into the third point, which is that there are proposed investments in other areas of our budget where we, if we intend to invest in those new areas, we're going to need to prioritize things out of the budget in order to be able to accommodate them within the, the constraints that we have. So I've noted two items on there. Uh, we have some uh, significant requests for school security upgrades, which is also a part of the strategic plan and some continuing investment in technology and keeping our equipment refreshed and making sure that our uh, cybersecurity is uh, up to where we need it to be in order to protect the, uh, the network and our, and our student information. And to equip me real quickly, just to remind the board that uh, with those school security upgrades, we have that federal cost grant that we are uh, in the midst of applying for. It's been exceptionally challenging this week because that grant is due tomorrow and we can all come in depth with uh, you know with the medical situation that's been going on. But that would be a huge help if we're able to uh, obtain that funding in terms of not impacting our our local budget. Thank you, Dr. Curry. So here's a summary of our twenty twenty one budget. Um, and you see three columns there. You see our last our last full fiscal year 2018-19 of actual, where we finished with a surplus of uh, $880,000. Our 1920 budget, which we projected to have a deficit of about $4.4 million, which is consistent with the uh, his, the last uh, the recent history in terms of uh, ending the year plus 1% better on revenue and plus 1% better on the expenditure side, the net to uh, a, a sort of a balanced budget. 
When we look at the 2021 first draft, you see that our revenue comes in at $247.2 million. It's about a $5.3 million increase. I, have, I do have some more information on what, that, uh, what those look like in more detail. Um, and you see that our total expenditures increased from $246.4 million to $253.6 million. That's an increase of 3% or $7.3 million. Gives us a starting point of a budget deficit of $6.4 million, just shy of $6.4 million. For some context, when we started the budget process last year in 1920, the budget deficit was $6.8 million. So we are in a similar situation in terms of uh, needing to uh, needing to do some significant work in order to uh, work that budget budget deficit down, but we're not uh, too far off of where we were last year. So I, I would say we're in uh, a similar position. Um, I will continue to, to stress that it's my belief that the, the best case scenario for the district is to work that budget deficit as close to a balanced budget as as possible uh, in order to be able to avoid any sort of um, change in the local revenue landscape or significant unexpected expenditures uh, because if, if those do change midstream that makes it very difficult to adjust um, in the next year's budget and so I, I do have concerns about making that deficit uh, as, as trim as possible um, and that's I know that we are as an administration committed to doing that. Well how are you handling is there what's the discussion with the economic situation so we've, we've had a lot of discussions about everything's been optimistic and everything's been running great One, or 191 million dollars a good portion of that is uh, earned income tax yes mm -hmm. and we could be looking at a devastating EIT number Right. So, um, thank you for mentioning that because this <laughs> was put together before, I think the day or two before the Fed cut interest rates by half a point. So, I am concerned about the number that I have in for interest revenue on the, yeah, it's not up on the screen here. Um, I flipped it. Revenue side, you'll see some of my figures are actually decreases just to sort of match up with the trend that, that I'm seeing over a, a couple of years. Um, you see some pluses, you see some minuses, but it is what I'll call a, a cautiously optimistic. Um, I don't have significant increases. I'm basing it on what I'm seeing historically, um, but it's not conservative to the point where um, I'm decreased, I've decreased any revenue other than some, some minor adjustments in a few lines. Um, the major assumption is the uh, real estate tax rate, which is assumed in this budget at, at 3.1%, which is the Act 1 index plus the exceptions. So I can certainly put in to our financial planning model what does this budget look like if there is uh, the, the, the additional half a point rate cut, which I heard about uh, yesterday or today, that that comes down, that, that could have an, an impact on the economy. Coronavirus is clearly having an impact on the economy. Yeah, I think we have to look at worst case scenario and what contingencies are for that. So we've been operating at best case scenario for some time. And uh, hopefully we're not living at worst case scenario this time next year, but I think we have to have contingencies for that. Since we have the planning, the uh, modeling software to do it, mm -hmm. it's at least worth a cabin discussion. What if, God forbid, this is where we are. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I think that that reiterates the point of that, that deficit, if we get caught in a year where EIT starts to drop and our expenses are, we don't have any contract negotiations uh, in for the 2021 budget, all our contracts are, are in place for that year, so our costs are pretty well known and pretty well established. Um, so we have, we, we could have some, some, uh, some risk. Could you go back one slide for just a minute for me, please. Of course. Um, so you're going to try and shave $6.4 million basically out of 60,000. You're going to try and shave 10% out of everything. You have to shave 10% because the salaries are the other 191000 if we focus solely on that, three, yeah. If we focus solely on that 300 to 900, yes. Yeah. Now, um, 
this, if, if you'll allow me, I, I no, when, I, when we get to the there. assumptions, oh, yeah, there's, please, some, please. there's some things that are not yet factored into the budget, okay. which will have a positive impact I stand on that nope. salary benefit I'll stand line, that. but, yep. but uh, <laughs> right now, yes, that's, um, the 6.4 would have to come either from the expenditure line or from positive revenue, uh, positive revenue. Assuming no staff reductions, which I am assuming we're, we're adding staff, so, right. So and Dr. Kerr, we see that that 60 million is really only about three million increase. I shouldn't say only. Three million. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. So yeah. to, cut, to cut half of that is to get back to ground zero. So that one has that to come back. Yeah. So thank you. So I'll just reiterate here, and, and I, I don't intend to go through all of these individually, um, but the 3.1% increase in the real estate tax millage rate. That's not, um, you're obviously not being asked to prove that right at this point, but that is the index plus the exceptions, which uh, last I checked, uh, PDE was reviewing our application for exceptions, but I have no reason to think that they would not do that. Um, and we will talk a little bit about uh, some of these uh, changes in state revenue as we go into the, to the state budget proposals, but that's primarily the increase due to um, there are our debt service subsidy, which had not been adjusted to reflect um, some of the new borrowings that had come on um, for our, uh, our new bonds, and uh, also the uh, additional security grant for the, the two counselors, and uh, the increase in Social Security and pieces reimbursement attributable to uh, our staffing costs. So these are the, the proposals that uh, Governor Wolf put forward in his budget address in early February. Um, you'll see that our um, estimated, what, our, what we are estimated to receive for this current fiscal year is in this middle column, and what has been proposed in uh, 2021 is in the, the far left column. Um, differences totaling $165,000. Um, these are, again, proposals by, made by the governor. Um, they are based on preliminary data, data, and there's always political uncertainty with respect to the state budget, so it's prudent to take a conservative approach with these uh, budget line items and not assume the increases that are, are proposed by the governor, even though um, at this point all indications are that increases will be, will be likely. Uh, it's still not, uh, probably not prudent uh, until they actually approve it. So to increase those line items significantly. Other funding item of, of, items of note, excuse me, uh, the transportation line item has been flat funded at the state level, which ostensibly is a funding cut for school districts because our costs are increasing for transportation. The, uh, they don't make adjustments as they are supposed to make for the cost index, which is the factor of uh, how much money to allocate to us. So we are not keeping pace with our transportation <coughs> as our costs go up, the, the funding is staying flat and really that delta between the two is, is growing. Um, the state has not resolved the plant con moratorium, so for Council Rock with about $100 million of uh, projects in the pipeline, uh, that's eight cents per dollar, so that is uh, $8 million of potential reimbursement that over the life of the bond, obviously. Um, that is not coming our way until they may come to resolution on the PlanCon program. We are still, of course, applying as though um, the program exists in the event that they retroactively uh, put it back in place, but um, that would significantly assist our efforts to um, offset those costs. Um, interestingly, the, the state decreased the total amount of the school safety grants, and uh, it was at $60 million. They decreased it by $45 million, which was very odd. Um, and all indications are that the reaction from the legislature was, well, you know, why, why is this happening? There's no way this is going to fly. All indications are that would come back. That's not going to affect our funding for the school counselors. That's been approved. So this would be the um, funding that we use on a, it's on a much smaller scale, um, probably I would say about $60,000 a year. Um, but nevertheless, this is an unusual move. And then at the federal level, uh, there were increases in all of our title accounts um, proposed. 
Now, whether that comes to fruition is, is to be seen, but that was the first time in a couple of years that we've seen funding increases rather than funding cuts. So that was a, a, an interesting, uh, interesting development. A couple of policy recommendations that could have financial implications, and again, um, there's, at this point, there's no indication that any of these recommendations have any, uh, any steam. The, the first one, uh, the charter reform legislation, um, we are recommending that the board adopt a resolution at the meeting next week in, in support of charter school tuition reform as it would have a positive impact on, on the district. That is, of the five items up there, that has the potential for, the, uh, for action this, this year. Um, there's a number of uh, policy recommendations within that item about whether or not the charter schools can advertise on KYW and say that it's free tuition. There's a number of different ways to try to control the funding increases, um, but again, that's all uh, has to be determined through legislation. Uh, universal free full day kindergarten. Uh, there was no um, no funding allocated to that <laughs> recommendation, yeah. which would be a significant cost here in, in Council Rock and likely impossible from a space perspective. Mm -hmm. um, they did propose hardship waivers for districts that could not accommodate um, could not accommodate that, that with uh, that program without building additional classrooms or an additional building, uh, but that did not seem to have a whole lot of steam. Um, Forty five thousand dollar minimum teacher salary uh, would not be uh, would not have an impact in Council Rock as our starting teacher salary for next year would be forty five thousand seven hundred dollars, so we would be just over that minimum amount. Um, minimum wage, uh, we don't have any employees that are paid minimum wage, but our, some of our contracted vendors do, so that could potentially have cost implications if it's approved for um, our custodial contract and for food service. And the lead and asbestos remediation uh, is most likely reserves just for the Philadelphia School District. Uh, the last item on the screen there is just something of, a, of an FYI at this point. Um, the Every Student Succeeds Act uh, was adopted in 2016, 2017? Uh, it's a federal statute. It replaced the No Child Left Behind um, legislation. And one component of that legislation was that schools were to report, school districts were to report funding by school. And that at some point, the Department of Education will be releasing that data uh, to the public and we'll be doing so on a per school basis. So at some point in the spring, and I intentionally put it in quotes because that's the best information we have from PD at this point is that it will be sometime in the spring of 2020. The data will be released to the public and it will show a comparison of all the schools and a per pupil expense per school based on the data that we provided in our last year's financial report. So I bring it to your attention because what it is going to show, because we are um, in the position of having teachers in buildings on different points of the salary scale, yeah. and we have buildings that are newer and more energy efficient versus some that are older and less energy efficient, some that do not have cooling costs in, the, in, the, uh, in those cooling months. Um, we have one principal at every, at every elementary building, um, and when you take that numerator and divide it by a smaller number of students, the cost per pupil is going to be higher. So um, I don't know what the denominator is going to be, what data point they will use for the number of students, but I can probably get pretty close and I'm going to do an analysis on why um, we may have some discrepancies between elementary buildings and our two middle schools and our two high schools because what we what the potential exists for data comparison. Why is the spending higher or lower at school A versus school B? And we need to be prepared to, to answer those, those questions. And there's reasonable reason. It's not, <coughs> but it's not that we are intentionally spending less at a particular school because we don't like it or what have you. There's, there's, there's reasons behind it. So. And it's not that school is the vast majority. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the smaller schools, it's, you see a higher cost per pupil just because there's economy. So the board would just need to be aware of that. Question. We're going to get asked. Yeah, we're going to get asked. And is it told we have a spring thing? This is no different than what we've dealt with in the past around the kind of like, yeah, students, that's worse. Students in 
accountability, they typically give us a week's notice um, at most. Uh, work goes live, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes only a couple of days. So uh, we will, of course, keep you abreast of this, and uh, we'll be sure to let you know when it is live. Okay. okay. Uh, just a couple of quick items on the expenditure side to Dr. Thorburn's uh, question here. Uh, so you see up there our contractual salary increases um, for each of the three groups. And again, that's just the salary portion of, of that budget. So the administrative group, uh, 152000 the professional staff, $2.1 million, and the support staff, $696,000. Uh, two other items of, of note. The PISERS rate, as you well know, is increasing by uh, about uh, two-tenths of a point. Uh, that translates into $2.3 million on all of our salaries, uh, included, inclusive of those salary increases. And uh, health care continues to perform quite well. We are, uh, we are projecting a 1% increase in our, in our claim call. Our higher employee share through uh, our negotiated contract. Um, those two items are actually contributing to a decrease in health care of about $1.3 million. And when I first saw this number, I was a little alarmed. I thought that that was uh, unusual to see a, a decrease. Um, but I also will be coming to the board with a recommendation on the medical fund fund balance because there is, uh, because of having a couple of good years of, of fund balance, we have accrued some, some additional funds in that account, which give me the comfort that although this is a, that is a decrease helping to offset uh, the, the salary benefit increases that um, we do have sufficient cushion to be able to absorb any, uh, any unexpected high claimants or um, or, or cost overruns that, that we, we can't project at this point uh, because if we are self-funded and um, it's not a, just a straight premium share. On the 300 to 900 objects, again, this is uh, uh, these. What I did is I, I looked at the, the largest pluses and minuses on on the 300 to 900. So again, this is everything everything else outside of salaries and benefits. So I'll point out just a, a few things here. Um, on the software and equipment line items, that's where you're seeing the majority of the costs associated with uh, the strategic plan initiatives and our technology plan initiatives. So the refreshing of equipment, cybersecurity, software net needs, and the uh, uh, communication tool um, that's, uh, that's been requested for implementing as part of our strategic plan. Um, we discussed at the beginning of the budget process the staffing contingency. Again, this is in lieu of budgeting for additional staff members that are unknown. So in this, this increase here for professional staff, prior budgets would have included an additional two or three staff members at the professional level to cover enrollment increases. The uh, support staff could have included an additional eight or two. In lieu of in increasing those numbers of FPEs, We've taken the approach of just including a, a small contingency there that, if not used, would return the uh, fund balance just as it would if uh, we budgeted for two additional employees that were not needed at the time of, uh, of the school year. Um, the food service fund transfer, this is also, we've taken in the last several years an annual transfer out of the general fund to food service to fund the uh, students who are at the high schools on free and reduced lunch. We hope not to have to do that because of process in the food service program, but I did believe it prudent to include that number, and if we can project a, a profit, then that may be able to be eliminated. Um, on the decrease side, the, the book line item is of, of note. You see a decrease from 1920 to 2021, and the reason for that is the inclusion in this current year's budget, 2019-20, of the Bridges math program, which is, again, not included next year, so there's a decrease in that, in that line item. All of the other objects, $35 million proposed this year, translates to just about a 1% increase. So you're seeing the, the largest significant uh, increases and decreases on that 300 to 900, totaling $2.9 million. So we obviously have some work to do between now and when the board is scheduled to approve the budget on May 28th. 
Uh, we are going to look at that last slide of 300 to 900 uh, reductions because that is the, the that is the stuff, and that's uh, typically the uh, uh, less painful place to look for reductions. Um, and we'll continue to look at the, the budget assumptions that we have in on both the revenue and the ex expenditure side um, to be able to try to look at actual spending and determine if we can make any adjustments to, to true those numbers up to what we expect we might actually come in at. That budget, the expenditure budget on the staffing side does not include any retirements from the professional staff ranks. Recall that when a teacher at the top, typically at the top of the scale, retires and is replaced by a teacher at the lower end of the scale, then there is a savings of at least fifty to sixty thousand dollars just on the salary end for for the benefit cost. So once we start to get those numbers in, uh, the deadline is uh, April fifteenth for for CREA to to put into their retirement. So we should have better information at the <coughs> April Finance Committee. Um, and uh, Ms. Taylor will be at the committee meeting that month to do her uh, presentation. So you'll see the, the changes in that, uh, in that line. So there's our remaining timeline. We have uh, uh, a proposed final budget to approve in April and a final budget to approve in May. Any questions about the budget? The guidance yes. First year is paid by the grant, and then first two, first two, then they go into the third year. Exactly. Was a good guess. Just need to Couldn't remember all the time I had. I it was one or two years. No, absolutely. Did you say that the current the full day kindergarten doesn't have traction from what you can see? None of those policy recommendations from the, the charter reform has the most traction, but even that is a little shaky, I think, as far as uh, it, it gets significant resistance uh, from the charter lobby. That would be an un, well, the kindergarten would be another unfunded mandate of extreme cost. Very much so. And I don't. Yeah. That's one of the biggest ones. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Do we need any action on um, the resolution uh, about charter schools? Do we need to discuss that or take any action on that tonight? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm no. Okay. Yeah, we, we have it on the uh, board agenda as a discussion item. Um, it's a the, the resolution itself is, is fairly um, straightforward. It's mm -hmm. the PSPA template that yeah. I presume many of you see uh, being approved by other school districts. And it is not, it is simply about the funding formula, right. and it's not about whether charter schools are good, bad, or otherwise. It's just the funding formula it has not been updated since 1997, mm -hmm. and there's lots of ways that it can reflect the actual cost of educating, particularly in the cyber charter schools. I think, Bill, didn't you, did you send an email around from the entire board about if you had uh, any questions or objections to reach out to you and Dr. Frazier, or was that just... I did not, no, right. just those Kristen and you as chairs. Did Kristen and I have some? Yeah, I think Kristen and I have some. Okay, yeah, you're right. She did. She did. She did. She did. That's right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Anything else? Okay, no public, no other questions. Hearing nothing else, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.